Biggie, take a hand. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, everyone, watch your eyes if you're here. For those on the replay, it's 10 minutes to 12. So if you want to fast forward past whatever mischief I'm going to get up to, but I need to zoom in just a little bit. And it always just takes a little bit to get this adjusted. Oh, happy anniversary to us, Carol. Isn't that so exciting? Three years. That's like almost basically from the beginning, right? Just getting myself all organized. Got threads everywhere. It's so exciting. Three years. I know there's so many. Well, not so many, but there's a decent amount. Like when I say anyone over five, that's so many to me. There's a good number of y'all that have been here from early on. I think that's just totally amazing. And three years has just gone by like that. Hi, Laura. Before we get going, you guys know I like to play with a little bit of something, something before we get started. I've been working on a new tote bag. And I just, I really want to see what these look like. Let me see. So if I stay right here in the center, we're good. Hello, Barbara. Morning, morning. I'm working on a new tote bag, and I thought I would use some of my blue scraps since the bin is so full. Hi, Isabel. Good evening to you, I believe. Anything with fabric in a machine. I dabbled in the beginning. Try, you, know, you try a little floss tube. You try a little knitting, podcasting. But apparently, you know, for me, it's fabric. It's all about fabric. So I'm making half square triangles using my blue scraps and salvages. So I really just want to see what this is going to look like. I'm doing five inch squares. Let me get one that's not rounded. You know, you use these rulers a lot. And if you're not careful, you get that little rounded corner. I've used, what where it is? I've used it so much that there's no numbers or anything even on parts of this ruler anymore. But it's like... One of my first rulers, and I just don't want to get rid of it. It's like, it's important to me. Hello, Sue. Sue, you're going to the ER now. My goodness. I really thought you would have gone last night. I, I really had faith that you would have gone last night. Put some headphones in and take us with you. At least you'll have something to keep you company while you're waiting and for those of you that don't know i'm not all upset and worried because i know why sue's going but i'll let her explain since she brought it up otherwise i'd be like oh no sue what is what's going on but i know so you knew it wasn't going to get better all right i'm going to be mean to you i've got my hands on my hips see right here i got my hands on my hips i don't know if you can see it. hands on my hips and i'm giving you the look and i'm saying girl it wasn't going to get better. Nothing that looked like that. Body parts go like this. And when parts of the body, it's not your hand, but when parts of the body go like this, then you know it's not going to get better on its own. You were just being way too stubborn, and I gave you a good talking to last night. And I went to bed figuring, oh, Sue's smart. She's a grown woman. She's going to do the right thing. I kind of had it in the back of my head you weren't. Sue injured her foot. Sue broke her foot, guys. Okay, I'm telling you, a foot's supposed to look like this. It's not supposed to have part of it that kinks off to the side like this. I mean, okay, I'm, I'm hoping for a severe sprain. The way some of it looks, you might get lucky, but I'm afraid you broke the bones in the top of your foot. My prayers for you and what I'm putting out to the universe is that you don't need to have surgery for it and that you didn't do any damage by not going last night okay i like that i do like that now today of course we are going to be working on the folded hexi ornaments but i like to play just a little bit i like to do something relaxing before we go live and this is what i'm working on and i just want to make two of these Yeah, well, you know what's really good nowadays, though, Carol, is because you can do it without the sewing pedal. And I've talked to a few of you, and you all actually figured out how to 
as a right-footed person, you figured out how to use your oppressor foot with your left foot, but I think it's pretty kind of cool. Yeah. Did you put a bunch of ice on it all night and all morning? Because for them to get a good x-ray, they really need to have it iced and not have a lot of inflammation. So I really hope you put a lot of ice in it. Cindy Walsh shattered my right foot 10 surgeries later. It's healed. Yeah, and then every storm you're going to know before because I bet you got arthritis in that too. That's the hard part afterwards. So we all need to sign up and we all need to take turns going to Sue's house to take care of her because she's going to have to put her foot up no matter what's wrong and she's not going to be able to do her chores or take the dogs out. You're going to have to... Are you... Like, We'll see if you can drive. Yeah, 10 surgeries, isn't that? That sounds awfully, that sounds awfully a lot. That You know she messed up her foot really good that way. All right, so let's see what these two look like. I'm debating whether I want to. I'll have to have more. Jackie, you're fine. We're not starting until 12. I like to come on about 10 minutes early and just kind of jibber-jabber and just give everyone time to get in. So I have options. I'm going to do these on both sides. So I have an option of going like this. I think I have different fabrics here for all of these, but I did mix and match on the salvages. Or I was thinking zigzags. So you have it go up and down and up and down. It's going to be four by three. So I don't, hi Sunny, I don't have a lot of room to play with. But I don't know, I'll probably have to do everything I'll do like a little take a little picture or a little video or just look through my phone to see what I prefer I guess I could do four but then there's a third one but that is a worry for another day that is just something I had to play with I feel like if I'm not working on a tote bag then I'm not doing my job all right Sue good luck Fingers crossed for Sue. Hopefully it's not as bad as it could be, but I got a feeling it's broken. Well, do you have a joint right here? So maybe you just popped it out of joint. Like you would pop out your shoulder. Oh yeah, you would need good friends with uh, 10 surgeries on a foot like that. I'd imagine that's months long of he healing. Hi Cheryl. Bye, Sue. I 100% I feel bad for Sue. Sue and I chat a lot. We've come very, become very close in the last couple of years. But, hi, Jennifer. I gotta say, an accident's an accident, and I don't blame Sue for that, but she should have taken her little butt up to the ER last night. That's what I've got to say on that matter. You hear me, Sue? You'll hear me later if you watch the replay, and if not, I will tell you 12 different times, you should have taken your butt up and got it checked last night. Because let's face it, if any of us got hurt, and we're like, no, 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 but if our friends got hurt, we would say, you should go up to the ER right away. But when we get hurt, when we get hurt, we're like, oh, it's fine. It'll get better on its own. So what if the bone's sticking out of my arm? It'll be fine. It's okay. All right, we're coming up to 12 o'clock. We got 35 people here. Welcome, everyone. We are going to work on the folded hexi ornaments. I put a link down below in the description box for the original video. And I had to watch that video a couple times to figure this out to make sure I was doing it right. And I came up with an executive decision. Hello, Crafty Made Stitches. If at any time you guys pop in and I don't see you, I apologize greatly. Hello to everyone who's here now and everyone who comes later. Hello to everyone who's not chatting and just wants to hang out and do dishes and fold laundry. I decided that while I enjoy doing my videos the way they are. I feel having a talkative video is okay. I feel that it's fine to give tips and tricks. 
But at the same time, I also feel that some of the people are correct. Some of my videos are just a little too chatty and a little too long. And when you have to wait 15 minutes for the tutorial to start, I think that's just a little bit too much. So what I'm going to be doing coming up, starting really soon, is I'm going to start redoing some of my videos. Uh, like, let's say we're doing a Quilt As You Go Table Runner. I've had a request to make a new video for that. So I'm going to do a new Quilt As You Go Table Runner, and I'm going to... I'll link to the old video in the new video, so if anyone wants a super chatty version or just to check it out, I'm going to tell you the rules, tell you the measurements, get it done, and be done with so that... Those who want a short video will have it, and those who enjoy the chitter chatter can watch the old video, and everyone will win because it will be new and updated. And I think a video that's three or four years old, or even one that's even a year old, when I go back and watch it, I can see where I can improve on it. So I think it is a really good idea to update videos and do new ones. Plus, technically, it won't be the same project because if it's Quilt As You Go Table Runner, I will do it differently than last time, so it'll be okay for the new videos, I hope. And there you go. Gwenny's here. Hi, Gwenny. Oh, I don't know anything about a Mac. Hi, Becky. I, I, I'm so sorry, Gwenny. Maybe you can Google it in another window and see what it says. Or do like I do when I'm watching, I will watch on a tablet and I'll put the video full screen and I'll put the comments on my phone because that way I find it much easier to comment. Excellent, Gwenny. I'm so glad just putting it out there in the universe fixed it for you. I like to do comments on my phone. It's quicker and easier than trying to do it on my tablet where you're, I don't know, they always get mixed up. Hi, Angel. At 12.05, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make one of these. I am just going to give the directions on how to do it. I am going to ig not ignore you guys, but I'm not going to look at the chat. I want to just make one of these real quick. So anyone that's coming in that's new and hasn't made one before, they can get the instructions on how to make it. And then if they want, they can leave or they can sit and chat with us. And then after I make the first one, I will sit around and we'll chat and... I have a whole bunch of them cut out in different fabrics and stuff like that, and then we'll go from there. Hello, Doreen from New York. Just, I want to give you guys a heads up just so you know. I don't want to totally ignore you. Simply Mo Maur. I will able to get you. Oh, Maureen. Simply, so that would be simply more. Oh, simply. Oh. I love little things like that. Simply more crafting. Excellent, excellent. Wonderful. Okay, so I'm not even going to wait for 12.03 because I'm not very patient. I can't wait for the last second like that. I'm not good. I can sit. If you say you're going to meet me for coffee, I can come 10 minutes early and I can sit and wait. And if you're 10 minutes late for traffic, I'm good at that. But when it comes to let's get started, let's get started, I'm excited. I can't wait. So for those of you popping in, let me go over what we're doing. We are going to be making these, it's like an origami because they make it with paper. As again, I got a link to my original video down below, but we're going to make a folded hexagon star ornament. You can make this and put it on a gift tag for a bag, I mean for a, a gift bag or something like that. You can hang it up as an ornament. You can go ahead and use it. Some people were suggesting you sew them together and then you could hang them up on bunting or whatever up on the tree. But what I did is I decided for this size, I'm using a six inch hexi. Basically, whatever size hexi you start with, cut it in half and that's gonna be your final size. So if you start with a 10 inch one, you're gonna get a five inch ornament. If you start with a two inch one, you're gonna get a one inch ornament and good luck trying to fold that. I have a cardboard template that I just trace around with. So let's use light fabric so we can see what we're doing. I know I have a light colored teddy bears. Here we go. So I just put it on the back of my fabric. I traced around it and I cut it out. 
I am using a lightweight fusible interfacing on it. I am using, I have to get up and look, P44F, it's a Pelon fusible. It's a very lightweight sheer, you can see through it. It just gives a little bit of structure. I was speaking to a viewer and he likes to use the starch so he doesn't use any interfacing. I've also gone and marked all of my halfway points on each side. So mine's three inches, I mark it an inch and a half. You can just lay it there. Or if you wanna put a mark down on your template, you can use it there. I've also, sorry, I wasn't supposed to look up. Thanks, Carol. I also put a mark in the center where you could fold it like this. Here's my quick little mistake as a tip. If you put a mark in the center, don't use a red ink pen because otherwise, can you see that red dot on there? The ink goes all the way through. So you don't want to do that. So just be careful. I could have used the heat erase pen and it would have been a lot smarter. So now I have a length of thread. I like to put some beeswax on mine just to keep it from getting all tangled and it helps it glide through the fabric easy. I'm using a thread that's gonna blend in. Now I don't have anything on these, but you'll see in the original tutorial, you could put a button here to cover up this messy part. And I'm not worried about this red blob of ink there because I can put a small button or a bead. Or I was thinking the other day, you can use those, those gems that you put on with heat and that just kind of glue on there like that. So that's possible. So as I'm gonna start with, I'm just gonna go into the center here and I'm just gonna take one little tiny stitch. Now this will go through all the way to the back. So if at all, oops, and put a knot to the end of it. If at all possible, you wanna have it to be a matching thread, but if it doesn't, it's okay. Again, we can put a button back there, a little bead, a little gemstone. You can put whatever comes to mind there to cover up that spot. So I'm just gonna take tiniest stitch in the center just to anchor it. And then you can go to any side that you like. And about an eighth of an inch down, I'll put my little thimble on, about an eighth of an inch down on that mark on your center on any side, you just wanna put your needle from the wrong side to the right. We're gonna do all of our work from the wrong side because as you see, we're going to be bringing it to the center. Now I'm going to take and put where I just went through to the center, just like that. If you wanna fold this, you can, but you don't have to. And for this first one, I'm going to also go through the back of my fabric just to anchor this. And as I'm pulling it through, when I get towards the end, I'm gonna go through my loop. Let me make sure you guys can see. Do I need to zoom in a little bit or are we okay? So then I'm just gonna go through the loop because I wanna knot this little leg of my star there because when I let go of it to do the next one, I don't want this to become loose. I want it to stay nice and tight. Then I just go to, once you do the first one, go to your next one. You can try going in opposite directions, but I find it's just easier to go around clockwise or counterclockwise, totally up to you. Same thing at that center mark, about an eighth of an inch down from the wrong side to the right. And we are going to try to keep my fingers out of the way. This is a very get your hands in the center of it so nobody can see project. So there, I brought it to that center point. Now instead of going through the back, I'm just gonna take a bit of that first leg that I popped down. Just can go underneath and grab it and go through there. That way I don't have any more thread going through the back. So if I've matched my thread pretty well and I only have one or two stitches, I'm good. Again, I'm gonna lock that stitch by going through the loop. Where am I? Maybe I need to go this way. Oh, that's smarter. A little closer is helpful. Okay, close your eyes, I'm gonna zoom in. Okay, there we go. And that should do it. Okay, thanks Carol. Okay. The other extremely long video with lots of conversation in it, kind of fast forward to, you know, like maybe the 10 minute mark or something. As I said, that one was a quite chatty one. Thanks, Carol. And then let me see where I'm at. Okay. 
Then I'm going to do the next leg and I'm just going to keep going around like this. And don't worry, I've got plenty of them. We're going to make more. We're not going to sit here for just 20 minutes and be done. When you're making these, you, again, each one going around, I'm going to bring it to the center and I'm going to anchor it just by maybe grabbing underneath of this little bit of fabric there, lock it. Oh, yeah, I remember now. As we're going around, it's going to feel a little awkward on the first one, and it's going to take you what feels like forever. But by the time you get to your second one, you're already going to be a pro. And by the time you make a dozen of them, you're going to be able to whip these through real quick. You'll be able to carry on a conversation with 43 people watching you on YouTube and not worry about getting too lost. Yes, it has little teddy bears, and it has Christmas ornaments. Let me see. I'm not, I have to stand up so I can see where I'm going. Oops, sorry. There you go. See, it's got little ornaments on it. I got a combination of Christmas fabric and fun fabric. I, I want, oh, Carol, stop talking to me. You're going to get me in trouble. I'm not supposed to be talking. So we keep going around. So you will feel uncomfortable and it'll feel awkward. I'm only teasing. And, but once you get going, it's going to get so much easier. You see how I have my little, these pieces here. Hold on, I got, got all excited and I moved myself. These pieces here that are flapping are going to become these bits here. So they might get a little bit in the way. And if you want, you can pin them out of place or you can put little clips on them. But I just kind of, <laughs> I just kind of keep them like this for now they're not bothering me saturday so we're going to hear a lot of motorcycles it's a beautiful day here all the people are out on boats so hopefully most of the noise has already happened this morning again i am going through the loop and locking each one of these because if i didn't look at these would all be flopping and i don't want them to be loose i want them to stay nice and tight because my goal is to have all of these to be nice and equal i'm just going to open this up because i can get to that last one just make sure you're not moving your fabric in some weird way that it gets folded and ends up on the back somewhere Bring it to the center. Now at this point, so maybe I might have to bring this down with my fingers. See how I just kind of move it out of the way. Bring it down. I tried doubling my thread. That is not a good idea because I kept getting myself all knotted up. I'm using a 50 weight thread. You can use whatever is comfortable for you, whatever you like. I brought out my bobbins with all of my different colors so whichever project I work on today I will have my thread there it's a lot easier than bringing out a whole bunch of spools because this way I can just grab it and I like to keep a bobbin wound for every spool of thread that I own because when I'm in the middle of a project and I've got to switch threads I do not want to have to come on loop I don't want to have to wind a new bobbin okay so here is my mess But that's the fun part about it, how it goes from a stripe to that. So I have all these up. I still have my thread attached. I am not cutting it at all. So what you can do is if any of these are in your way at this point, you can clip any of these out of the way. But as I said, once you get going, they'll just, you'll get used to it and it'll be out of the way. So here's the one we're going to work on. So what I like to do is I like to take my fingers on either side with this is the part coming up and I just finger press this section right here. I don't mess with this point. I like that point to be there, but I don't press it down. I just finger press right on that edge and you can do that all the way around if you want. I don't know, Brat, 146, Brat 46, you might just have to do it and let us know. Send us some pictures, put it up on the Facebook group. I added some pictures to the Facebook group. A gentleman has been sending me pictures. He's been having a blast making them with his daughter. So we got all kinds of good pictures. He couldn't join us today, though. 
All right, so here I am, I have this, and I like to work at it from the outside. I find having it facing this way is a lot easier for me, but whatever way works for you is fine. I get that, Quinny. I get that, I don't have that many spools, but I use the ones I have constantly, and I, I have over 200 bobbins, so I'm good. I just would need some more little bobbin things. Not Gwenny's talking to me too. Y'all gonna get me in trouble with the owner. All right. Everything, since it's all the same color, it's kind of hard to see, but I have taken this point here. Let me see if I come up close to y'all. I take this point here and I fold it down. And I wanna bring this pointed part to the center. And I'm gonna do this all when I get closer to the table, but for now, I only have two, but I was looking, Pat Sloan has those boat things, and I thought those boats would be great, the bobbin boats, because then I can have like a boat for each color. I can put all shades of purple in one, all shades of pink in the other. So I only have the two of them, and these this is a style that I love with the, the rubberized stuff to it. The bobbins stay in there nice. I get a couple little threads, but it's not too bad. I've learned that those are my favorite. I have the plastic boxes with the lid. I don't really care for those that much. So then when we got about halfway down, you just kind of hold it. You could put your pin, a knitting needle, or a toothpick on it. But what I do is make sure my thread doesn't get unthreaded, okay. So we're gonna bring this back, and I wanna bring this point now to the outside. And what's gonna happen is you see how these two pieces fold in on the side edges? This is not a good angle for me. Okay, so here's my point at the edge. You see how the bears have folded in? And then right here where these two points are, I want to take this point and fold it back to the center. And that's going to cover all of my raw edges and stuff like that. And the only place I have a raw edge is the point in the center. And that's why I want to cover it with a button. And gosh darn it, I unthreaded it. Yes, origami. Exactly, the origami stars. I put a mug in the middle of the donut. It holds, oh, yeah. That would be great. You put a little mug or something in it, that'd be perfect. I keep these in a desk drawer so they stay dust free and everything. Yep, all the seams are gonna get covered up. There's a link to the video, the original one down below that's got some really close up video of it. And I also show how to do it with some uh, felt. I use felt too. So if you want to start for the kids and use some felt, it's a bit bigger and it works out good that way. So maybe white might not have been the good, but yes, yeah, so I'm going to put this down. And when I fold it back and I get that, I like to have mine kind of touching right here in the center. But when it comes to the point, I like to kind of overlap them so that when I bring it, give it a little finger press if you want, just not severe, just to hold it down. So when I bring it to the center, I have more of a point. And as you're doing it, if you don't kind of, some people like to overlap in the center. You can overlap in the center. You can just have a meet. I do a mixture. But if I don't make a good point here at this tip part, when I bring it forward, I get like a squared off rectangular piece in there. So at that point, we're going to go back and we're just going to stitch it down and tack it in place. So you can just grab it from whatever. I've got the two pieces that are right here that I can just grab that tip and hold it in place. Again, we're making a mess in the center. Even if you have matching thread, it's going to be a mess. And that's why you put a hot affix gem on it. You put a do some embroidery or something. I guess those stitches would show though, but I usually just stick a button on it and you can get so many fun buttons to put on there or just use up a basic simple white button. Again, I'm gonna put it back through the loop and make a knot and hold that stitch in. So here we go. Do, 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 do. See, there's my center point and there it is. And since you're using all the same fabric, it's kind of hard to see. Okay, now everyone, we are allowed to chat. We're gonna do the same thing all the way around and it's gonna end up looking like this and then we'll just keep talking and we'll talk a little bit more. This is like a hexy Suffolk puff. 
I don't know. I've seen the... You mean like a yo-yo? It's similar to a yo-yo. I have yo-yos. Where's my yo-yos? I have yo-yos. Because one of you amazing people made me yo-yos. And I think that's what you all call a suffix puff. Except with a yo-yo, if that's what we're talking about. A yo-yo is a giant circle. And you do a running thread, a running stitch all the way around. Bring it all to the center and you have this. By the way, I have videos for yo-yos. I have a video for a yo-yo and how to turn a circle into a hexagon and how to turn things into wreaths and stuff like that. Because let's face it, if it's going to be something wild and crazy, I probably have made it. No AC. It's Pitbull and his lawyer. Oh, I have missed that conversation. Oh, it's super, yep, that's about what it is here too. It is so hot. Sassolette's perfect, practically perfect in every way. Okay, everyone's pretty good. Just, yep, yo yo. What turns circles into hexes? Where have I been? Teresa, it's one of the older videos. Yes, you can just cut out a circle, and I'm pretty sure, yeah, because I saw it on one of these, a video from like eight or nine years ago where they were doing it at a quilt show. I could be imagining it, but I'm pretty sure I have a video for that and how to turn a circle into, I bet you, watch this. Because I am the proprietor of the channel, I can put links in the chat. Let's see, I can't see you guys anymore, but that's okay. Dun, da, da, dun. To turn a circle, circle into a hexagon. Let's see if that pops up. How I stitch a hexagon from a fabric circle. Look, I didn't imagine it. I have Christmas and Halloween fabric in that video. Where are you guys? Here we go. If I did everything right, that should take you to the video. I'm going to get all these links gone because while I got my internet fixed finally, I don't want to mess anything up. Don't name it Puff if you're in Germany. Uh-oh. Yeah, some things do sound awfully posh, doesn't it? Hello, Kathy. I used to make a lot of yo-yos. I used, to, I mean, I enjoy making yo-yos and I used to make them a lot, but I don't know, I just don't, I don't, um, I don't use them that much right now, but I probably will start doing something and adding them to tote bags and things like that. Sorry, you gotta have a drink. You're gonna chatter all day. Gotta have something to drink. Okay, back to this. I tried working it opposite, so like I was working on that side and I just can't do it. This just works out so much easier. I like to give myself a nice crisp point right here. If you have one of those little little small applique irons, you can give it a nice little hit with the iron. I put my point right back in that center so that I know I'm gonna line everything up nicely. And I just tuck these in as I'm going. And you're going to end up with a piece that matches. It's going to be the same diamond shape as you had there. And then just fold it to the center. A waist pouch, a fanny pack. It's a totally different meaning. Oh, yeah, everything, a bum bag. I kind of like a bum bag. That's fun. 
everything has such different meanings depending on where you live. And even like here in the U.S., it all depends on which state you live in on how things are going to have different meanings. And I've also learned that my kids' generations, they're like my 22-year-old son, they just want to make up words just because they want to be different from us and they don't want to be... They don't want to, you know, use our terminology and stuff, so they just kind of make up things. But what they're not realizing is they're just taking words that we used back in the 70s and 80s and just changing their meanings. So I never know what my son is talking about. I'm always asking him, what does that mean? I don't know what that is. Hi, Rose. Yep, better late than never. It's only 1226. We've got a few more minutes, like a half hour, 45 minutes to three days left. We can stay here as long as I'm awake. So let's face it, if we stay here too long, even talking, I will fall asleep. Yeah, well, that's Kasash. You are a very dedicated person. And, and when you live in one country and your friends go live and you want to chat with them on various channels so it's like you're warming up over here and then you'll be wide awake when it comes time to hang out with mom and pop so you'll be all set i kind of thought they were going to have a 12 hour today did they not have a 12 hour yet this morning hi Allie. what size hexi are you starting with i am starting with a six inch one because i just kind of like the three inch hexi and actually if you watch my first video, a friend had sent it to me. Where am I? I feel like I'm out of view again. A uh, friend sent it to me. Next week is the 12th. Thanks, Sass. A friend sent it to me, and it was this size, so I just went off of hers to figure it out. And what I found that is if you start with a 6-inch, you'll get a 3-inch. And when I say 6-inch, so here's the thing, guys. When you go to print these offline, as a quilter, when we do EPP, we see... That three inch, this is a three inch hexi to us, so it's one, two, three inches across here. And this one is an inch and a half because we measure the side. But if you go onto one of those websites that print them out for you, they measure, let's see, what do they measure? One, two, three, four, five. They measure from point to point. So that's not how we measure. So, oh, that's right, mom's away this week. That's why it put it totally out of my mind. Um, yeah, so they measure point to point, so it's really not the same. So if you're thinking about it, you have to kind of figure out what you want, print out a variety of them, or just take your chances, print something out, and if it's the perfect size, you're good to go. But that's how it is. Whatever size this is, this is going to be half that size. And I'm starting with a six inch. I had made an eight inch when I first started doing these, and I didn't, it was too big in the end. I didn't like the finished Hexi Star. So I just like to bring these points out nicely. But I want to, I cut out, when I was talking to the gentleman that's been showing me all the stars, he's been doing fun plaid ones. His came out really fun. I put those in the Facebook group. But I had this border fabric, and it's got candy cane, so I cut it this way. And then I also cut it so that, I cut it different, so it's, you know, it's a different angle. However you want to look at it, it's cut differently. This thimble is, what is this? Guys, I need new glasses. This is... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hold on, I might have something. I can't think of the brand name. It starts with a C. Clover. It's a clover thimble. I think I just picked this up on Amazon. It's a leather thimble and it's got the the little metal dimple thing in here. But yes, yeah, clover, exactly, Carol. But then I turn it over and I like to use this side because where I put my needle on this side, it always hits outside of the metal. So there's just no sense. So I just flip it over and it has extra leather here. And I really prefer the leather. I do not like, thanks Rose, yep, it's a clover. I do not like those plastic ones or the, the rubber ones or anything like that. They don't, they make my finger feel like it's suffocating. It's too, it's not flexible, it's too firm. 
I mean, right now I definitely can feel it on there and it's kind of warm and hot, but at least it doesn't feel like my finger doesn't have claustrophobia. Hi, Dinah. Welcome, welcome. Now, for those of you that watched the recent whip, we are going to be making Franken totes next month on a live stream. Whether it's the first one of the month, oh, come on. I put beeswax on it and everything, and it still gets tangled. We, I don't know which one it is. I have to. You know what? I'm just going to hide that thread. I have to make sure I have everything prepared and I want to make sure it just covers the first knuckle. Oh, and then they have the ones that are leather on this side and it has like a strap on it or elastic on it. So the leather is only on the tip of your finger and it doesn't cover the entire finger. Yeah, clover, I like clover. It's really good. See, get your glasses on, Glenny. As I said, I know I need mine. My, I know my glasses are more than two years old. At this point, I, I do a lot of, yeah, fingertip exposed. It, it, you definitely need it to breathe. I, I can relate a lot of things to when it happened based on whether or not Rob was still alive. So I know I got my glasses and he was still here. So they're at least two years old. You're supposed to get them every year. I wear progressive no-line bifocals. I think this time I'm going to try buying them online. You know, just go up. With, Walmart does fine. Hi, where's Birdsong? There she is. Hello. I Walmart does fine down here for eye exams. So I'm just going to get an eye exam from Walmart and then order the glasses online and see how they are. I said they get pretty expensive and the prices online are a lot better and several people I've talked to and reading reviews and stuff that they're not having they're not having any trouble with it they really like them so I'm gonna have a loose thread that's I can't get tucked in because I got a knot in it Pedal, my, my leg is popping up. Ay, ay, ay. These are good when you're just going to sit down in front of the TV. You want a little something, something to work on. Hi, Paula. Hope everyone is having a good summer. Things are going nicely. Everybody's staying healthy. People are getting out and about in their gardens, doing all that kind of fun stuff. Okay, so this one's kind of messed up because I have this loose thread in the center, but it's, it's just too darn bad. That's the whole thing where, you know, you're going to put a button in the center. And then I just take my thread and I kind of... I peek into here and just go into like one of these petals. And I do like we do when we bury our thread when we're quilting. And then you pull on it. Trim the thread. And the end of your thread will just sneak right back into there. Now, at this point, you have the option. You can give this a nice good press and flatten it out a little bit, have a nice iron to it. And what the viewer showed me is the gentleman that was just starching his because he didn't want to use any more interfacing. It's a little bit harder to fold. It makes it a little, It's lightweight, so it's not stiff, but it does make it a little stiffer. He showed me. Now, I already showed my patrons this last week. But he top stitches down the center, and then you can have these pop up like this, and it becomes more of like a flower. So I have this one, and I have this one. This one's starched. This one's the interfacing. It tends to stay up in that position if you don't pile a bunch of stuff on it on the table. 
so you can have it pop up nicely so it does that and but you will have the thread on the back of course but if you're doing a thing where you want to put two of them together you can put a ribbon through the center here and hang it and that'll cover it now i wouldn't try to sew these together like through that that would be difficult you can put you can do a little buttonhole stitch or some tacking stitches around there and where's my needle through there it is do something like that to hold it down or you can put a little of the wonder under use some fabric glue or whatever how do i play catch up oh paper mache octopus that sounds nice i love paper mache well i was thinking that some of them you can make them like this if you have a large christmas tree i have a small one it's just me i don't see the point in a big christmas tree but you can hang them on your christmas tree as ornaments you can string them along you can take your thread maybe some embroidery floss or really thin sheer ribbon and go through this part right here and come out that side put a little knot there put a couple beads there and you can hang it up as garland the same thing you can do with bunting and put it on bunting make this into an ornament attach it to gifts this season and when you give someone a gift they will also get a handmade ornament so when my nieces and nephews and everything my kids were little i made a new ornament every year for them so then when they turned 18 they had like 18 ornaments that were handmade that can go on their tree when they move out so that's always nice i do like the hexagon on the back as i said i will have to cover mine because my ink bled through but i want to see what let's see we have this fun one i have this one too i thought this was really fun so i've got the candy cane stripes it's more of a a beigey color candy cane so i have this wild and funky one and then i have this fabric that i received recently thank you kathy then we have our regular stripes and this gorgeous red fabric i just had to have something in that and if you have some i have some sparkly ones and I was thinking, I want to test it out, but if you give this a good press and it's flat and maybe you only use the starch and not the interfacing, I bet you you could put this in a Christmas card or a fabric postcard. Oh, this guy here. Let me tell you about that for a second. So you could flatten him out. This guy won't get flat because I did something different. And then you can put it in a card. As long as it stays less than a quarter inch thick, then you can mail it for the price of a stamp. Now this guy what i did is i took one of these and i traced it out and i made a hexagon shape from it i cut a piece of batting to this size and as i was folding it up i knew where the batting was gonna i knew where this these would fold up to so i would put my batting in put a little glue stick in and hold it down and then I did it all the way around, and that made a bit of a puffier one here. It has more substance to it. But to be honest with you, I did not enjoy doing it. Now, maybe if you had fusible fleece, because even with the glue stick and hitting it with the iron to set it, it was the, the batting kept moving. But I think with fusible fleece, that would be fun. So, all right. So, should we do the starburst? So, we do the black and red? candy cane I've got my plaid and I got a stripe what do you all want to see starburst plaid black and red everyone wants to see them all huh We got a couple of candy canes. We'll start with a candy cane. We will start with this one. Because when you're going to look at it, you're going to see that as these come in, it's going to change the way everything changes so differently. But I need a new thread. I want to see the plaid or the stripe. Plaid, plaid, plaid. Oh, no, we got more plaid. We shall do the plaid. The plaid comes out really cool. I tell you, I've been talking daily with this gentleman about the stars he's been making with his daughter. He is making them 
for their rooms so they each have their own color that they're doing. We'll do the plaid and we'll do the, then we'll do a candy cane one. And one way or the other, I'm gonna sit here and work on them. So we'll see how long we can all last. Once you all start ditching me and disappearing, then I'll turn off the live, but I'll keep making these. Just because I've already cut them out, it would be senseless not to make them. And if my eyes don't work, I also brought out the needle threader. But you still have to kind of see where the hole is so you can line it up properly. And I always stab myself. Put my thread down, hold it. There we go. Perfect for these old eyes. And I say old eyes not just because I'm old, and I don't think at 52 that I'm old, they're just old eyes because they don't work very well. And they need progressive no-line bifocals, so I, I feel like they kind of need a little help. And don't make your thread too, too long because you get tangled up like I did on that white one. I think using an eighth inch sheer ribbon, you can put it through here or put it into the part here. On the other video, I used embroidery floss, and that works. And we'll do the plaid and then we'll do a candy cane. And we'll do the candy cane one that's kind of crooked and not done on, not done square. So I wanna kinda of see what that one looks like too. My phone battery dies after two hours, so if we're here too long, I'll have to plug it in. But we've got at least two hours before we have to worry. And we started at about 10 minutes to 12. So I'll just grab a little section here. So we're in July. Is anyone starting to get ready for Christmas? I have to start my daughter's quilt soon. I'm going to start that. I am working, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see that I have posted some fabric for a bag that I started with my patrons starting tomorrow. As long as I get the video posted, I haven't set it up yet, but I'm making this bag, a Mondo bag. And these are the fabrics I'm using, and oh my goodness, they are gorgeous. This is from a charm pack that I don't have in front of me, but you'd have to see it on my Instagram to see what the name is. So I'm working on that. I've got the tote bag that I'm working on that I showed you with the salvages and the blue fabric. You haven't even thought about Christmas yet? I don't really have to do too much. My kids are like, whatever. I got them all gift cards for their birthday in April, May, and June, and they really like that. They really don't enjoy me going, what do you want for Christmas? What do you want for your birthday? What can I get you? Because they're just like, I don't know, I don't know. So I think I'm just gonna get them a gift card. Robbie gets his handmade socks. And you'll see in a future video what's going on with that. That's getting changed up a little bit. Okay, hold on. Clay pot soldiers for my mom's yard. Started Christmas but haven't finished. Christmas in July sale. Joanne's has their Halloween stuff out. I'm really thinking, I, I don't go out much, but I'm really thinking I'm going out next week. I'm going to go to Michael's and Joanne's and Lowe's and Aldi's and the Dollar Tree because they're all like in almost the same area. Kathy, what have you been doing? Diana works on it year round. Yeah, if I had to make things, I would year round. I need to start thinking about stuff for the shop and what I'm gonna wanna put in there. Do you think I should make, my nephew's getting married Labor Day weekend, quilt time, excellent. From what I saw, the Halloween fabric of Joanne's looks really good. 
Do you think I should make tote bags in Christmas fabric? I was thinking about doing some trick-or-treat bags that can either be for adults because they're quilted or for kids for trick-or-treating, but I don't know if I should do any kind of a tote bag like the quilted ones for Christmas. But I was thinking maybe in, it reminds me of Christmas, but it's not Christmas fabric type stuff. I need to get on the ball and start working on trick-or-treat bags. Yes, that's what I was thinking, trick-or-treat bags. Oh, Kathy. That is major surgery. And I bet you you're doing a lot. I'm just happy you're here visiting with us. I imagine you're doing a lot of napping and resting and, and therapy and all that stuff. That really fills you up. Yeah, like maybe like a wintry type thing, but not like Christmas because not everyone does Christmas. Hi, Terry. Terry, I love the way your name is spelled. That's different. I've never seen that. Wall hanging. Oh, everyone's in all kinds of recovery mode this month. My goodness, my goodness. You kind of like shocked me there for a minute. I, I get, I, I haven't been hanging out in many of the chat rooms and talking to people, so I've kind of missed out on everything. behind I've been like in my own world I've been so busy doing things that I've missed out on everything hi Ronnie welcome welcome yeah I would imagine there's a lot to it the neighbor I talked to next door that I call the crazy neighbor lady she was in a she was riding on the back of a motorcycle and got into a terrible accident and she had to have her leg amputated somewhere between the knee and the ankle. So she lost her foot and her ankle and all that. And I, I just remember she was, we're not close or anything, but I just remember she wasn't home for a, quite a long time. She was in, you know, the hospital and then rehab for several months, just learning everything and recuperating and coming out of basically a medical coma. I feel like Kathy, I feel like you're a very strong-willed person and I feel like you might be a little, I don't think people should call it stubborn. I think people should call it determined. I think a lot of us have that determination in us that if, so sometimes you have to get to the point where you're like, you know, life sucks. Bad things happen to good people and life sucks. You get cry about it and then you get mad and then you get determined and you just kind of put everything into it. A tiger. Oh yeah, prosthetics nowadays are amazing, especially with the Olympics coming up. You see more and more of it. Carol, I've got a crazy neighbor lady that way. I call this lady the old lady because, I mean, it's, I don't like to sound rude, but she's older than me. She's older than the crazy lady and She's kind of mean too. And then I got the, the pool guy with the fenced in yard behind me and he's just, he thinks men are the only thing that's important in the world and that if he speaks and he talks loud, that everyone should listen, especially a woman. And he does not like that I have an opinion about my property, my life, and you know, the world around me. He just thinks that if he talks loud enough, he can bully me and get whatever he wants. And when I talk to him, he speaks Spanish and not much English. So he always has a friend that interprets for him. And his friend always stands off behind him. Or the guy, the crazy neighbor guy can't see him. And he laughs because I don't let him push me around. He's just my neighbor. He's not my husband or my father or my brother. So technically he's nothing to me. So I stand up for myself. Oh, Carol, I think you might be, because um, 
I'm pretty sure I am. I'm sure I hear, I'm sure my name gets said a lot with my neighbors. <laughs> so when my husband was here, he was very loud and opinionated. He was one of those guys that thought if he said something loud enough that everyone would believe whatever he said. So he could say whatever. If you say it loud enough and you say it like you believe yourself, then everyone else believes you and it's crazy, but they do. So we were always the butthole neighbors. I don't want to swear on YouTube. So yeah, we were always those neighbors because Rob would <laughs> Rob would stand out in the driveway and yell and it was it was kind of funny. <laughs> no, he's not Cindy. He's not the boss of me. He doesn't pay my bills and even if he did, he still couldn't be the boss of me. And sometimes you just have to stand up for yourself. He was weed eating around his property. Now they put their fence for their property is probably about six or eight inches onto their property. So in my backyard, six or eight inches is their property. And he told me like I couldn't touch his fence and stuff. I was watering flowers and I was getting his fence wet and he was mad because he didn't want his fence to get wet, which I thought was kind of funny because it's Florida and it rains. <laughs> But anyway, so he was he was yelling at me. I said, well, then you know what? If it's your property, then you should take care of it. Because he kept telling me how much it was his property. I haven't, I haven't been weed eating out there because with all the flooding and stuff, I really don't want to take an electrical cord through a puddle. So I caught him the other day. He was weed eating his yard. And he kind of, he kind of peeked around the fence to see if I was taking care of that piece of property is what I'm going to guess he was doing. I could look out my sliding glass door and see him because I have really dark tinted windows. But he was being really covert and he was kind of peeking around and stuff like that. I thought it was quite of funny. No. That's kind of funny, Carol. Yeah, um, I used to work with a lot of Spanish people so I could follow the conversation because I kind of know what we're talking about. But if they all of a sudden changed it, I wouldn't know. But I, I'm pretty good at figuring out context and kind of following it that way. I just haven't, I'm, I'm lucky, you guys have seen my videos where I have to put extra words at the bottom because I forget English words. I'm just not capable right now of learning Spanish, so. Take me as I am, it is what it is. I figure, Paul, if we don't stand up for ourselves, who's going to do it? Rob always stood up for me. He was a really, no matter how mad he was at me, no matter how mad he was at me or whatever we were going through personally, he always stood up for me, which I always appreciated. But even then, you can't always expect that person to be the, exactly, Carol. Smile, say nice things. They get really mad. I taught my kids when someone's like, not nasty bullying you but just trying to bully you and trying to be mean and nasty if you just smile at them give them that really crazy kid smile and say thank you so if they're saying you're a fat ugly slob and you don't deserve to live if you just smile at them and you say thank you so much i really appreciate that they get really confused and they turn around and walk away because they're like that woman's crazy we ain't gonna stand around with her there's something wrong with her Say thank you. I appreciate that information. You're so kind to tell me how much better you are than me. I can only wish I was as good as you are. Not everyone gets sarcasm. They do, Carol. They leave you alone. They don't they don't know how to deal with it. They're so used to being loud and mean themselves that when I'm not even in the video. Alright, you guys saw everything. I'm gonna zoom back out a little bit so you can actually see me working. Hold on, close your eyes. There you go. Yeah, they just don't know what to do. Yeah, it works every time. They just don't know. Have a lovely, I hope you have the wonderful weekend. I see you have your family over. I hope the weather stays nice and sunny and you can enjoy your pool. And don't worry if I call the cops at 2 in the morning because your music is so loud that my windows are vibrating. I appreciate you sharing that music with me. Crazy people. 
So I really do like the way the plaid ones turn out. And again, once you kind of get used to it, I put interfacing on all of these already. I pre-interfaced them. I kind of didn't like the um, spray starch, but maybe if I used, I have a lightweight starch, so maybe if I used a heavier weight one, it would be good. Thank you so much, Carol. I'm just so glad you can come and hang out with me today and that you just enjoy my conversation so much. <laughs> I had a landlord that didn't want us to walk on the stairs too much, right? Oh, because the stairs were new? Oh, and the doorknob. Well, what are you going to do? Well, you know what I say? You should just go ahead and put down some carpet or a runner or something, and I won't walk on the stairs. But if they're wooden stairs, they can be painted again. Hello. Thank you for putting in new stairs. I really appreciate that, but I'm going to walk on them. We're, hi Roy, it's the third Saturday. Happy Saturday. We are having fun picking on our neighbors. Okay, you know what, we're all putting it out here into the universe. We are putting bad karma out there. You're supposed to be nice to your neighbors. I mean, we're just telling stories, so I don't think it's too bad, but yeah. I try to be kind to everyone. I, I smile to people and I, I tell them, the person at Walmart that's standing out in the hot sun, we well, don't do it here anymore, but you know, counting the people that go through. The person that washes my shopping cart, even though I rewash it afterwards because they do a terrible job, I thank them and I tell them how much I appreciate them. You know, good fences make good neighbors, they say. All right, guys. butt crack boy. Let me get you up close. There we go. I love the way the plaid it has like a little bit of movement to it. You just have the regular on the back so you can see what the fabric looks like. And then, but here the stars are just really nice. No, I try not to start conflict because plus people have guns. They're scary. Okay, so here's that one. I'll keep all these here. And now we're going to do the candy cane. And uh, you chose candy cane. I get to choose which one. And I want to do the crooked one. See how that comes out. I pre marked all of these to save time. Thank you, Terry. Isn't it pretty? Yeah, I thought. I mean, I probably would have done plaid eventually. I hadn't really thought about it. But he was showing me all kinds of stuff. He said, I can talk about them, I can show them, I got his permission to put them, that's why they're on Facebook, in the group. Okay. Oh, drink first. I am drinking, I drink, um, I take a two-quart pitcher of water, and I add two of those flavored drink things. I use a mixed berry from Walmart. So you're supposed to use like one for what, eight ounces of water, and I use one for one quart, but that's what I'm drinking. But I'm going to pretend that we are drinking rum and coke or something today. We have several new houses being um, put into the neighborhood. We're going to have all kinds of people. I used to be able to see from one end of the neighborhood, you know, a quarter mile away, but now there's houses everywhere. I can still see a little bit of the sunset in the summertime, but I can't see anything in the winter. Oh, we're at the Tiki Bar, yeah, Tiki Bar, mmm. Mimosa. If we're going to pretend, I can drink anything, but I can't have citrus. I'm actually allergic to oranges. I, Because of the medication I take, I can't have alcohol. I asked my doctor, I'm like, can I just have a little? Like, can I just have maybe a shot or some type of a tutti frutti girly girl drink? And he's like, no, Robin, I'm sorry, but you can't have anything. And I'm like, fine. Shirley Temple it is. 
down here, and I'm sure you have it in your areas too, but a lot of the hotels and stuff, you can go in the pool and you swim right up to the tiki bar and they have everything right there for you. So you don't even have to get out of the pool to get a drink. It's all right there waiting for you. You have some wings delivered poolside. Well, you can use the flannel, Cindy. It's just going to make it a little bit thicker and bulkier. And I don't know, if, depends on how your flannel is and how it's woven. You may not need any interfacing at all. I would give it a try. Cut one out. Give it a try and see how it is. I have used, I did felt in the video link down below in the description box. I used felt. So if you can, if I can use felt and came out with a decent one that from what I remember, I liked it. I thought it'd be great for little kids to do that then I don't see why you couldn't use flannel. Some flannel is thin anyway. Minky, whatever, as long as you're willing to give it a try and figure it out and go slow, I say go for it. I'm willing to try anything. I mean, if they put all kinds of fabric into crazy quilts and those quilts have lasted 100 years, then why can't we? I know you're not supposed to mix fabrics in a quilt, but if I'm making one just for a young child to have fun with, then I don't see a problem mixing flannels and cotton and minky and whatnot because they're gonna outgrow it and I'll just make them a new one. Yeah, they would make pretty flowers. Speaking of flowers, I have these tools that I've had forever and I keep seeing them. I'm in the um, the rope bowl group on on um, Facebook where they do the fabric wrapped bowls and they keep putting these flowers on that I love to make and I haven't made them in a gazillion years but since I rearranged the rooms I gotta find the templates figure out where they are I couldn't even tell you what the name are I want to call them kiwi but that's not it it's when you take it's like a yo-yo maker and you put your fabric in and it makes these like flower petals that are rounded on the top then you put your thread through them and it gathers it up and you put some beads in the center it's really kind of cool i wonder if i have them right here as a matter of fact let me look talk upon yourselves nope 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 but i do have something i received a gift in the mail we're going to be trying this soon once I have some time to play with it. I have a strippy stars tool from Creative Grids. It's so that you can make a star block but the star is like this far away from the edge so you never have to worry about cutting off the points. I usually just do wonky ones but this one makes them so that they're not wonky so it's really oh look here's a picture. Hold on. Hold on. You can make that block and you can make it in all kinds of sizes, uh, three sides, five sides, eight sizes. It's really kind of cool. I just got it on Thursday, so I haven't played with it yet, but it's on my list. I'm thinking I'm going to have to start working longer days because there's just so many things I can do and make that I don't have enough time in an eight-hour day. Art quilts and utility quilts, yep. Yeah, uh, I don't make heirloom quilts. Now, maybe if someone was getting married and they wanted an heirloom quilt, then I would, you'd have to be really special in my life for me to do that because you have to be precise. You have to, uh, heirloom quilts are just totally different in my book. But utility quilts, yeah. I don't care if you use mine to move with. I mean, if you want a quilt for your dog, tell me and I'll make your dog a quilt. Don't give them the one that I made for you. But I don't care if you put it on the TV to move with. I don't care if your kids take it in the backyard and play in the mud with it. That quilt is getting used. It's being loved. And I am happy. Oh, Tracy's leaving us. Oh, you're going over. Go ahead and hang out with Pop and Munchkin. Yeah, anyone who's hanging out with the Mom and Pop Quilt Shop, go ahead and enjoy yourselves. We will see you next time. When I first started quilting, Becky, I didn't know there was the quilting police. I was watching Simply Quilts, and I was make I made my first quilt out of my kids' clothes, scrub fabric. I didn't have money to buy batting, and I didn't know where to buy it when we were in New York. We were in upstate New York, 
So I went to the thrift store and they had one of those mattress protectors that were, they kind of looked like batting to me. It was squishy and comfy. So I just took the elastic off and I used that inside my first couple of quilts. And then several years later, when we were back here in Florida and stuff, I learned about the quilt police. And by then it was too late. I already figured out all the mistakes. I love Alex Anderson. I watched her and I watched, gosh darn it, now I'm stuck for the name. Who was the lady that did all of the craft shows that had all different kind of crafts? It was knitting. She did it with fabric. Carol Duvall show. I loved her. I watched HGTV, DIY, crafting channels all the time. PBS. I loved it. Oh yeah, don't don't come to me and look at my project and tell me all these horrible things. If I ask you how to possibly fix this situation, sure. But don't tell me no quilt police stuff and how terrible it is. I won't say that to you. Even if you show me the most god-awful ugliest thing, I will say something good about the way you sewed it together. There's always something nice to say. Nancy Zimmerman, yes, Sue, exactly. Sue, I didn't see you peek in. Hi, Sue. I hope you're doing well. Making it, yep, I have that. I have that recorded to watch when I can stay awake at night. Oh yeah. Exactly. When you're, or they take an old quilt that was falling apart and put it into a new quilt. I was thinking, gosh, you have a, I mean, I have a DVR with those on it, but it's just, I think I actually got rid of it by now, but we had an old DVR that just didn't, excuse me, we just had all kinds of old shows on it. Well, thank you, Paula, and thank you for hanging out with me. I really appreciate it. I like being able to talk crafty and talk whatever with people because not everyone if you're not a crafty person, it's like trying to talk auto mechanics when you don't know much about a car. Right? So you got to hang out with people that understand it. You got to figure out how to keep moving your hands and talking. See, if I'm Italian on my mama's side, so I talk with my hands a lot. So it's kind of have... Bye, Paula. Oh, Paula's going to the beach. It's too darn hot for the beach. Go have fun. Enjoy. I think I'm enjoying the tote bags and I enjoy like the art quilts wall hangings and stuff because then I can add the hand embroidery. I can add beads. Yeah, I don't paint, but if you wanted to, you can add a little paint to it. So I think art quilts, if you can only pick one thing, that that would be the way to go because you can just put all the mediums in there. You can put knitting and crocheting in there. Ah, oh, Sue, you missed my salvages earlier, did you? I started working on a new tote bag that I am, I finally pulled out the salvages and started working with them again. I am doing a blue tote bag and I'm adding the salvages like this. I'm just trying to decide if I want to do zigzag or if I want to, you know, I'm going to do three rows of four as a tote bag. You're not going to have a lot. So yeah, so I've been playing with these a little bit this morning. I love salvages. You guys know that. Okay, keep talking about yourself for a minute. I have got to, oh, there's s'moresies. Come on, sweetie. Come on. Get up here, babies. Get up here, babies. I think Miss Smorzies is at 100% now, but I've been trying to call the vet for three days to get an appointment to get her blood work rechecked to make sure her white blood cell counts are back to normal. But I can't stay on hold forever. I just can't do it. So I'm going to try again on Monday, and I'm just going to have to set my phone down on speakerphone and go about my business. And when I'm, you know, we'll get to your call and the order it was answered. And it, 
if I ever get to them, I get to them. If not, I'll just have to stop by and make an appointment in person. Yes, that's what I've been trying to use for like quilting on a tote bag, some really bright threads. Because if you have them, you may as well use them up, put them in a fun project. It works really good with salvages because really just about any thread goes with it. Well, we lost quite a few people, but there's still plenty of us hanging out here together. You're fine, Sue. I have the same problem, and I have the same. Pro I can do it with a lot of people, but for whatever reason, I can't get it to work for Carol. I know the, whatever. I put an extra space in the beginning, at the end. I do something wrong with hers all the time. This is really interesting. Crazy quilt. Glow in the dark. Oh, yeah. That's fun. I like when you can do something to. That's why I like a wonky and stuff like that because you can kind of throw anything you want into it and it'll just work. Again, no quilt police here. As I mentioned before, I watched, I follow that fabric wrap the bowls on the YouTube, on the Facebook group. And I used to make those bowls and the more I look, and they do theirs with the machine, but I follow this one lady on Instagram that does it by hand. She just makes some gorgeous bowls and oh, you guys know you're going to see them coming soon because I love making those. Terry, we're just making these to use as ornaments. You can put a ribbon or a string on it. You can put it on bunting or banner, put it on a garland on a tree. If you put it into an ornament, you can put it as a package topper, add it to, so if you're just gonna put like a Christmas gift or even a birthday gift in one of those paper gift bag things, and you can put one of these on to gussy it up a little bit. Some people like to, we're talking about putting them together back to back and then when they spin. I was talking to the gentleman that I said if you made them out of fun fabrics or glow in the dark fabrics for your daughter, you can use like the fishing line and he said like the invisible sewing thread and hang it from the ceiling. So these would just hang from the ceiling and kind of whatever you come up with. Add them to a table runner, a tote bag, just about anything. It's one of those things that you can, like a yo-yo pretty much, you can just make them and eventually you'll use them for something. Or they'll just sit in a container and look pretty. Okay, this one is done. Do my jack-in-the-box thing and hop up and... I didn't finger press anything so all my points aren't pretty. I didn't do any of this stuff, but... There's the way that turned out. Remember, this is the one that was crooked. So it looks like that ribbon. I, I always had that ribbon that was red with the white when I was younger. So that's what that looks like. I'm going to go ahead and make the other one that looks straight on and see how that looks after I pick up the cat food. My son Robbie brought his girlfriend over for me to meet on Wednesday. And he's like, Mom, why do you have cat food in your sewing room? It's because Miss Smarzies, when she's hungry, she wants to be fed now. She only eats, she has this special food. Sometimes she'll eat 20 or 30 pieces, and another time she might only eat six. So there's no sense trying to feed her, you know, properly. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think it's kind of cool. I like it. Let's do the other one. Now, this is the one that I cut straight on. So that looks like that. I like the design. I'm just not crazy about colors for me. Christmas is red and green, not the creamy beigey, not the dark green, the true Crayola red and green, just the basics. Thanks, Becky. 
glow in the dark on those hexy ornaments, but I never go around to finishing those. There's a box full of pre-ironed hexes just waiting. And you know, at one time, you're gonna come up with a time when you're just sitting there one day, like maybe unfortunately, like some of our other viewers, you might break a foot or you maybe your shoulder's out of commission or you have, I guess you were not really with a migraine or something, but maybe you're just sitting somewhere and you can't get up and do anything because of whatever reason. You can pull that out and work on it. I've got a lot of hand stitching type projects. Sorry, I'm unplugging headphones that I just can't do until I get new glasses because I just can't see. I can't see to do my embroidery. I do. I'd like to get one of those magnifying things that like I have um I have a tall lamp. I mean, we have a couple of them, one in this room and one in the living room. A tall lamp with a pole and it has like the octopus arms that come around. I'd like to get some type of a magnifier with a light that hooks to that light pole. So in my chair in the living room, I can bring it over and work underneath that. And I think that would help out a lot too, even when my eyeballs are good or bad. So it's just one of those things where I don't go out specifically to look for things and some things I want to have and I want to look at them. Yeah, unfortunately you do, yes. So I think having a little box nearby wherever, a little plastic bin that has you know, these are my fibromyalgia projects. You know, these are my bad day projects, so I can work on them. I think that's a good thing to have, because if you, if you have to prepare something when you're not feeling that good, you're not going to, but if you have it prepared ahead of time, then I think you might actually get a little bit something done. And you know what they say, like when you're knitting, if you only knit 10 stitches a day, Still, by the end of the month, you've knit, what, 300 stitches? So even just a few stitches every day, you can get a lot done over time. But if you didn't do any of those stitches, if you only could do one hexi or one flower a week, if you did none, at the end of the month, you would have zero. If you did one a week, at the end of the month, you'd have four. So what if it's a 20-year project? You know, eventually, you've got something to do with your hands, you've relaxed. Yeah, get busy. You, you know, you do something, even if it's just good for your mental well-being. You've spent time touching things, being crafty, and you've kept your brain going. I think all those things are very important. I tell you, I would not be able to survive life in general if it weren't for my crafting. Ah, oh, thanks, Carol. You guys... Oh. You know what that sounds for? I had threaded my needle. It gets hooked on the, I have to have the thimble, but it gets hooked on it and I pull the thread off regularly. You guys have got me through the last couple of years. My crafting has helped out. A combination of the two of you all and I have survived. Otherwise, I'm telling you 100% after Rob passed and while he was sick and everything, I would have just been curled up on the couch in a ball and you would still find me there today thank you cindy so two years later i would still be curled up in a ball i know i there was many times where i just wanted to do that but i was like nope my youtube friends are counting on me and of course i need the money too because it's my job so i gotta get off my butt and get moving and then after a while it just becomes a habit now it'd be weird not to work People ask, okay, what do you, you know, like when you have to fill out things for government stuff or whatever, and they're like, okay, what hours do you work? I'm like, well, I work seven days a week, and considering I do crafting at night while I'm watching TV, so I basically work from seven in the morning till nine o'clock at night, and they're like, no, you don't. I'm like, yeah, watch. I answer comments in the morning or at night. I'm working. My go-to feeling off craft is making small crochet flowers. Yeah. Or like granny squares things that like if Roy if your flowers were a little bit wonky because you were having a bad day and you didn't quite get it right it's gonna be fine because no flower is perfect so I think that's a great craft to do ironing projects on my lap while watching some favorite oh Sue you are reckless you are reckless I am dangerous with an iron on the table 
and you're putting it on your lap. I'd like to do hand embroidery. I used to do granny squares when I was doing a lot of crocheting. Those are great projects to do when you're half asleep. And if you're doing like, like my snowman embroidery, it's all traced out so I don't have to like think. When you're tired, I can't do cross stitch because you have to look at the pattern, get your eyes to adjust to it, and figure it out, then go over to your project, figure out where you're supposed to put the stitches, and I never get it right. This does not happen. I, I just like crafts. I like them all. I want to do them all, and there's just not enough time for them all. Some of the really, like the Marabilia, the really nice cross stitch ones and stuff, they're just so nice. Just can't do it. Just had to appreciate everyone else's work. Come on. There we go. This time, let's give them all a good press. Oh, hold on. Reaching across. Tiny iron for that. Oh, okay, okay. No, there really isn't enough time. I can't physically hold down a job either. I've gotten, my, my nerve issues and stuff has gotten a lot better since I don't know, since I've been doing the YouTube and stuff, I don't know what the correlation is, but getting up and moving or not doing the things that I shouldn't, I guess, or whatever it is, it's been working pretty good. But I can't, like, hold a job because there's days where I just have to curl up in the couch and not move for a week. And that's usually where I've thought ahead and I've made videos, so that works out pretty good. But, yeah. Except I keep losing my train of thought and I have no idea what I'm talking about half the time. I get thinking something in my head and I forget. But yeah, no, I can't carry, I can't have a regular job, I can't drive a car for very long, I can't sit down at a desk job or anything like that. As I said, I like the art quilts because you can add all of that in, or the crazy quilts. You can do your embroidery, you can add beads. It just puts everything right into that one project. Beaded embroidery, that's just a fun thing to do. I've been collecting papers to do the handmade paper. Just haven't found the time for that either. Oh, the fog is bad. You know, I thought pregnancy brain was bad. And then I thought that, you know, medical brain fog is bad. But then I got widow's brain, and I tell you, that was horrible. I have lived here in Cape Coral since I was 13, so 39 years. And I had to call my kids because I was physically lost in my own town because the widow's brain was so bad, I couldn't make it from one part of town to the other. I had to call my son up and I said, don't, don't laugh at me and I'm not teasing, but I am lost. I cannot figure out which direction to go to get from point A to point B. So brain frog, brain fog is a really bad thing. It's, it's debilitating. Again, that's why when you see the videos, I end up adding words to the bottom. You guys don't even see how many times I, I, I just stand here like this at the table for like five minutes trying to come up with a word, a simple word. Sometimes I have to turn the phone off and I Google it and then I turn it back on and like, then I just keep talking in the video like I didn't forget it or something. <laughs> Cindy, you know, just mentioned kids inheritance. They didn't need it anyways. Look, after you're gone, you know, so sorry that I'm killing you off like that, but they can sell all the crafts for money or they can start creating stuff themselves and sell what they make. Or save money on, I went flying, save money on gifts by making them. Yeah, right, Sue? Yeah, no, age doesn't help either, no. Yeah, well, 
and sometimes they're like, well, why don't you just use like your Google Maps on your phone? But sometimes that doesn't work either. That's like when your parents told you, well, how do you spell something? They're like, look it up in the dictionary. But I don't even know past the first letter. How am I going to look it up in the dictionary? I have, I call it Stalk My Kids, but I have the Find My Friends app so that my kids can find me if I ever get into that position again. I'm much better now. Things have cleared up a lot. So I, the widow's brain is pretty much cleared up. I just, I was watching someone else on YouTube and she was talking, she has a channel that's just about being a widow and stuff. And even for her, I don't know, it was like five or 10 years later, she still can't remember certain bits of time. Like you lose, you, it's like blacking out. You just don't remember certain time frames. They're just, they're gone. Yeah. And especially if you're using one and you're trying to figure out north from south and while you're looking at it, and if you turn your phone, it starts spinning in the wrong direction. Yeah, no, you can't find anything. You know, Roy, I mean, they have the wristbands and stuff, and I'm sure you're probably just joking, but I have always thought that people with, like, Alzheimer's or the kids that are, you know, with um, autism really bad, then they tend to wander off and get lost because autistic kids and a lot of people with Alzheimer's tend to go towards water for some reason. I really don't see a problem with some type of microchipping, and I know you can't just microchip uh, old people because it would get abused and other things but having some type of a the, with the watch now the Apple watches or the wristbands and stuff I think that's a great idea yeah you have to let things go Cindy you get too much in your head if you don't let them go then forget it <laughs> yeah my kids are, well, mostly my daughter and I, we get going out and it happens to both of us. We'll be walking and talking and then the next thing you know, you turn over in the middle of a conversation to look at their expression and you realize that the person you were there walking down the road or shopping with, they're not there anymore because they stopped to look at something 12 rows back and then you can't find them and they're like, where are you? And for me, they know just to go to the craft department because that's probably where I'm at. I don't care if it's just at Walmart. I'm going to check it out and see what's there. Yeah. When I hurt, when I stretch the, the, um, the nerves in the area, it's called the brachial plexus. It's between your shoulder and your neck. It's like I get this pain that goes from my right shoulder up into my right ear, my eyeball, and I swear it just... It sends this electrical impulse to my brain and it just loses things. I just don't have that memory. And then if you're on any type of medications or pain meds or something, you're totally, you're out of luck because all of that stuff affects your brain. And it really, then you, like you said, you add an old age and you are just totally screwed. No. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> run to the car and leave that would be <laughs> i can just imagine what rob would have said if i left him at walmart <laughs> sorry honey but you really peed me off and i left you yeah it just really it does weird things and i i i've had it for ten, over 10 about 10 and a half years now and it's i you see the way i'm i'm pressing it <laughs> Oh yeah, mine's pathetic too. It has the same fabric. I go there like every two years and it's the same exact fabric and there's nothing mm. new, but I just have to go with the same yarn. Okay, so this is, this is the crooked one that was off center like. So it kind of looks like when you make the ribbon bows and this was the one that was done when it was perfect. So there is the candy cane one. I think it's okay, but what time is it? It's 1.30. We've got about another half hour before we just get rid of everybody. Silver lining of a bad memory. I can't remember all the people who offended me, and I look completely forgiving to them, yeah. Yeah. 
I have this thing where when I go to bed at night, I don't hold a grudge. When I go to bed at night, the next day is a new day. So if you made me mad, yeah, I'm going to know that I've been mad at you, but I do not hold that grudge. I'm going to do the striped one this time now, see how that looks. But I, I'm very forgiving like that, unless, I mean, there are things you can't forgive. If someone has been really mean and evil to you, then, then we're not talking like that. We're just talking little things. You like the first one that was a little bit off ones? Yeah, they're pretty kind of cool. I like them. But this one, because we ended up getting like a little bit of green in there, that was a little bit weird. This one really looks like those plasticky bows that you get in the big bag to put on Christmas presents. So this one's, a, oh, I already have a striped one. So this is what the stripe looks like. So we don't need to do the striped one. And this is what the plaid looks like. So we've got zigzag. Someone wanted to see this. I know like after these live streams, I am done for the day. There is no way I could be coherent and think and like I would never be able to make a video and I don't do any crafting after this. I, I might like tidy up or I might iron or press something, but I can't cut anything. Oh, I yeah. Don't don't ask me about names or anything. Forget it. <gasps> Becky, go get it. It's already outside the door. We'll wait for you. Go get it. Go ahead and go get the fabric. My excuse is, I mean, it's you know. Knock on wood, it's never happened here, but I wouldn't want my package stolen off the porch. So I have to go to the mail. I have to go out on my porch and get whatever's delivered right now, even if it's in the mailbox. You know, they still go. I know down here, it was just on the news yesterday, people are going into other people's mailboxes and stealing stuff. Wouldn't want to have your fabric stolen. I'm like, sorry guys, hold on, talk among yourselves. I got to go get my package. Yeah, get the good stuff. Shopping online is a little harder for me for fabric because I like to go to Joanne so I can just get a quarter yard. And that way I can spend one to three dollars on a fabric. But when you shop online, you have to get two or three yards. And that's great if you're using it for background fabric or backing fabric and binding and stuff. But I just want to have a variety of fun fabrics. So I need to go to the store to get it. I mean, I understand why you can't. Whoops, I shouldn't have done that. Oh, well, I'll fix it here. I forgot to go through the center first. Go through it now. I got all excited because someone, del the mailman delivered this giant box on my porch yesterday and it went thump when it went onto the porch and made this really loud, heavy noise. So I was like, wow, one of you guys must have sent me something really fun. It was the flat rate padded envelopes I ordered from the post office. For something that are padded and full of air, it made such a loud noise. Dance in Paris back quarters. That sounds pretty. You can't post a link, Terry, but you can post the name. I don't have a problem with that. Everyone's up to, it's up to them whether or not they want to go there and buy anything. Everyone has to take their own precautions. But yeah, you can share names, I don't mind. You put a link up and it'll get blocked, so just that's that warning. Well, I tell you guys, I got pizza on the brain. I'm gonna have to make some homemade pizza tomorrow can't stop thinking about pizza that's that one thing if you could only eat one food I would choose pizza because if you think about let's say you're like you love spaghetti and if you can only eat one thing you're like I only want steak or I only want pasta it's kind of boring but if you only want pizza you can have breakfast pizza you can have dessert pizza you can change up the toppings a million times fabric utopia fat quarter is helpful I do like to go to Etsy and buy things here and there they are pretty good with fabric that way. Because you really, you don't always need a bunch. 
Homemade pizza. Oh yeah, homemade pizza crust and all because I'm allergic to milk and soy. I have to make homemade everything myself. And I prefer it. I like, I don't like a thin crust. I like a, I want to eat bread when I'm eating pizza. Yes, I might only eat two slices and I'm full for hours, but it lasts for days in the refrigerator and it can go in the freezer. So I think I'm going to make a couple pizzas with sausage. I got turkey sausage and turkey pepperoni. I've got the daya, daya cheese, whatever it is, the vegan cheese. And it's pretty good, it melts nicely. I've had like a cookie crust where you put the apples from like apple pie filling, that type of cooked apples in it, or with peaches, that's really good. Yum, 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 yum. It, and it doesn't really take that much effort to make. Now, when it was all five of us, I made each of us a pizza so everyone could have what they wanted. And no one's like, oh, Robbie ate more pizza than I did. It's not fair. Let me get real close. Sherla, when I'm stitching this, the very first one, I tack it into the center. And then afterwards, I'm taking this edge here. And when I bring it to the center, I'm actually stitching it to the one next to it so I don't add extra stitches to the outside. There's a link to the video. Oh, no sauce, Sue. I can't eat tomatoes either, so I have mine with no sauce. There's a link down below in the description box to my original tutorial. Or after we're all done, go back and watch just the beginning of this one, the first like 20 minutes. And I show to the best of my ability to how to do it. And in the other video, just kind of fast forward because I talk a lot. Sorry. It's an older video. For those of you that weren't here earlier when I was talking about it, I'm going to be redoing a lot of my videos with new projects and maybe adding a couple extra tips, tricks, and techniques. But I'm going to do them with less talk. And I was thinking, too, with... Oh, I thought I saw a cat. With my other videos, I'm trying not to talk in the beginning and then when I get to the end, I can say, okay, so after you make this, you can sew down the center or you can put two together. You can change it up and use it this way. So that way you guys are getting the talkative and the different variations. But for those people that really aren't a subscriber, they just want the project. They want to hear it in like five or 10 minutes and get out. They get what they want. I don't have to read their comments and you guys get the chitter chatter. So I don't know if I gave it that enough to you, Cheryl, but I am I start in the center and then I grab this one and I bring it down forward to the center. I put a tacking stitch in there just because it always moves otherwise. And then I go to the next little flat part. I have them all marked at the center. I grab that flat part with my needle and thread. Sorry, I, I zoomed out. I'm probably not even where you could see it. And I bring that one to the center. And then I tack it in this little floppy ear part here. I tack these together to hold it in the center. And then I come around and I grab the next one and I just do that same thing. And when I tack it, I go through this little flappy down close to the table here. So that I put it through and do the little knot to hold it. And I just keep going all the way around until I get to this point. And then if you're just starting out, they look kind of scary and you're like, oh my goodness, what did I create? So this is going to be the last one I make just to give you guys all a head warning. Can you show me the top stitch one? Show you what it looks like? Yes, show you how to sew it. Not on the machine today, but I just took it and I went to my machine and I lengthened my stitch to a 2.5 or 3.0, whichever one you like. I backstitched here. And then I just stitched from in the center of, right down the center of here, and I went from that tip straight to that tip in the center, and I went right across to there, backstitched, and then I went across. So that I went right from one star leg straight across, and that's kind of what you get. I know it's a little hard to see because of the fabric I chose. Maybe that one's a little better.
So it is at the middle of the edge. Yes, there are raw edges exposed, but it's only in the center. In the original video, I show you about putting a button down. You can glue it or stitch a button, and you might have some stitches showing on the back. So if you're tying them all off to the little loopy thing next to it, you only have one stitch back here, so you can't even see it on this one. So you can put a small button or something back there, and then a little button will cover that. Because when we take this, This is a dark one, kind of hard to see. I just move all these guys out of the way. We're going to take this point right here, that tip, and we're going to put that in the center. So it gives us a kind of a kite shape. And then you want to take that tip, and you're going to hold this piece back. You can use a toothpick or your needle. And you're going to bring that tip back to the outside so it matches up there. And these two sides will just want to fold in. So you just kind of bring them in nice and tight so they touch or overlap. And then you bring this back out. Now the original video keeps my fingers out of the way a lot better. It's got a really close up view. So then you have this folded piece here and the only raw edge is when you bring this tip back to the center is right there. So you do have a bit of a raw edge. I like the striped. I think the stripe is my favorite. The plaid is very cool and it definitely looks better in a lighter color. Excellent. I'm glad I helped both of you. If something crazy happens and I disappear all of a sudden, it's I was wrong about the battery life on my phone. Thank you all for hanging out with me. I apologize greatly and I will leave a comment here on my laptop so you'll know, but just in case, I just like to give you guys a heads up. You're very welcome. So even when you're sewing it down with that top stitching, I still feel like it needs something. I think I'm definitely gonna switch over to putting that hot glue gem on, whether it's you use one with glue itself or the one where you put the tool on it and it melts the glue on there. I think putting that little shiny gem on there helps the ornament look or the decoration of it. It spices and jazzes it up and then it covers it. Now buttons are fun and you can use novelty buttons or regular buttons and they're great but I like the idea of just hot pressing that gem down. This is fun. I like this one. Trying to think of different ways. Yeah, it's very good when you're traveling. If your thread doesn't get all tangled and goofy. My little tips aren't staying down at all. I know how to fix that. Tie you guys back up tight. If you end up doing any extra threads, any stitches like this, you know, it all just kind of hides away. In the other video I show where you can put clips down and everything to hold these out of the way, the clips just get a little too heavy. Hi, Shirley Jade. I don't know, but I know it would feel good on my hands. I had trigger finger and I'm just like at the end of it now. It's just really finally starting to heal up for about a year and a half. And then my hands get really kind of stiff in the morning and like right now, very arthritic feeling. So I think a stress ball with bumpies on it would feel really good to kind of, I, ow, I would like that. I think I would really like that. I like things with lumpy bumpies on it. They feel good. You know, that little massage. I always, I never laughed at my grandfather when he said it because I knew it was kind of basically true. But he's always told us that one day you'll just wake up and you'll be old. You'll have aches and pains. 
you'll make noises when you get up and down and out of bed and stuff. And things are just harder. Life is tough after a while. And you just, one day you just wake up old. And that, that day is like different for all of us. Well, welcome. We're glad you can make it. We are, we're going to be finishing up after this soon, but I'm glad you made it for a little bit to chat with us. That one day is here. Yes. I just, the cats are so needy in the morning, but I just want to lay in bed and stretch because everything is just tightened up and it's so sore and I just can't hop out of bed anymore. And when I sit on the bed, my feet don't touch the floor, so it's a it's a raised up bed. So I'm like, I just I just can't, guys. Just give me a minute. And they're all just like clambering and crying because you know they've got a whole four hours without eating. He was he was right, and especially if something like happens, like if you get into a car accident or something, it just makes it that much worse. You just feel so old. Oh, Cindy, that's crazy. I didn't even, I, I, I'm, I'm self-diagnosing myself, okay, based on what I read online. I didn't want to even bother to tell my doctor because I knew she'd want to send me over to a specialist, and then they'd want to do surgery. I've been following some physical therapy guys, Bob and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the Internet in their own opinion. So they had, you know, you do the massaging and you ice it and stuff. So I've done all that. And actually knitting at night was really good therapy for it. It really loosened it up. I don't, I very seldom have it get stuck to where I have to force it open. <laughs> that was funny. I don't have that issue with it just popping anymore. So it doesn't hurt as much. So I feel that it's, it's healing pretty good. I don't feel like I am you know, tricking myself and convincing myself that it's better when it really isn't. I love Bob and Brad. I've been watching them for a long time. I don't, I don't watch them as much because really I don't need to watch them if it's not something that I need, you know. This one's kind of poofy. It doesn't want to lay down flat, which is kind of neat. Yeah. I like the explanation. I don't remember where I, I read it or saw it in a video, and I don't know if it was from them, but they were like, it's like if you think about a pulley, so you have the pulley right here, and a rope goes through the pulley. So it's kind of how the ligaments, tendons, or whatever are here. So it creates a knot. So if you had that pulley and you had a knot that got stuck, and when you force it, it would come over until it went back around again, and then you force it, and that's when it gets stuck like this, like I just got it stuck and you have to force it because that's where the knot is. So if you keep massaging right here, there was a point where I couldn't touch it at all. So, you know, I can rub it really good now and I don't feel that knot anymore. So everything is pretty good. I tried to do the braces that you can buy for it and that just made it 100% worse because it hit right here. So it, they feel really good. So I, I feel okay. I do a lot of hand exercises and massages and stuff just because the way I use my hands and with knitting and everything I want them to feel good I want to make sure they stay nice and loose because as they say you know like I say it's your bread and butter and then this one is done and this is going to be it thank you the franken totes are just so fun to make we're making them next month on a live stream I have a feeling it's going to be the second one so when is that August 21st so if anyone has a request for the first live stream if there's something you'd like to do or you know you want me to work on something and we can do a crafting chat 10 days totally healed that's nice I mean I've been dealing with this for a year and a half two years and so that would be nice I just I don't have health insurance and there's no way I can afford the surgery so I knew that that wasn't going to be an option that is fun I like that one of course I as I said I didn't go through and press this one at all but I really like the way oops like the way that one looks the mondo bag yes the mondo bag is this one 
That's the one I'm working on with my patrons. I can't figure out what I wanted to do with my patrons, so I've just been kind of, I thought I would do the Mondo bag, and then if they want to buy the pattern or just sew along, because you can kind of figure this out on your own. So this is the Mondo bag. It is a really huge, if you look up at videos, on, uh, pictures on Etsy, it's a really huge bag to go to the beach or to take on a weekend trip or to the craft show or something like that. And this one's made all out of two and a half inch squares. And I showed you all, this is one, okay, this is one of the panels. It's 17 inches tall and it has a 10 inch square base. Yeah, the Franken tote is really good. I talked about it in the last live stream. The basic idea of you just take leftover squares and just keep building it out like a Frankenstein until it gets to the size you want. I don't think it has some little tricks to it. And the thing is, is I don't want to give you guys the directions because it's a pattern you have to pay for. But, okay, so here is... This is the cardboard that comes with it. And on the other side of this, that's the directions. That's all you get. So they're really small. It's kind of hard to figure out. Oh, I've done the steroids in my shoulder and my neck. And I have never, and, oh, I had them in my feet too, the cortisone shots. I have never been in so much pain in my entire life. That was horrible. So they don't have a lot of directions. And then the videos that are available for it aren't all that great. And what it is, is you have to do the lining and the outside in the same way. And it has these, so you have these L shapes that you stitch together and it ends up like this pinwheel. So you have, you have this shape here and this shape here. That first you have these four panels, then you have to sew them together like this. And then you sew them all together and it has a 10 inch bottom and 17 inch sides. And it's kind of weird, but it's kind of cool. And it's just really kind of freaky and crazy. And it's, it's hard to figure out, but I'm figuring it out and I decided it's someone sent me this and it comes with the those gridded interfacing so you just put all the squares on it and that's what those that I showed you so you just all right Rose we're just gonna finish up in just a couple of minutes too I, I'm sorry we'll catch you later we'll see you at the next time no it's not it's coming up tomorrow as the very first video for it you have not missed it Anyone that's a $5 and up patron will see these. I decided that I'm just going to turn the camera on. I put it right here at the end of the table like I do on my live streams. And then I just go ahead and, oh, power flash. I just go ahead and film it. I do a little bit of talking. And every week I'm just going to do like a half hour, 45 minute video. And we're done in about a month. Then we'll do it. Thanks, Carol. I, I'm just take it a step by step. I could say, you know what, this is too confusing. I don't want to do it, but I'm trying not to do that. So I thought I'll take my patrons along with it. And I'm also telling them how they can, all right, I'm going to say the words, screw this pattern. This thing is crazy, but let's just figure it out. I'll do it the way we want to do it. And we'll just figure it out in our own way and how you can do it to where you don't have to buy the pattern. You don't have to buy the gridded interfacing because let's face it, most of us are quilters. These are two and a half inch squares that you sew together in a panel. We the gridded interfacing just makes it perfect. We don't need to have this to sew. This is three. This is a four two and a half inch squares by thirteen, which is really weird. But there's thirteen two and a half inch squares. So you just go ahead and. You can stitch them together like you would if you were making a quilt or a table runner. You don't need to spend $13. Oh, excuse me, I got the hiccup burps. $13 on the gridded interfacing. You don't need to spend $15. Well, if you're a patron, I'm kind of like showing you how to do it, but I'm not showing you the directions. I, well, I guess I kind of, well, let's face it. If you watch my patron videos over the next month, you'll be able to figure it out. But you have to pay to, well, yeah, I don't know. It is what it is. 
call me a cheater. I, I can't help it. I'm just, I'm taking everyone through the step and that's what we're doing. But that's, I forgot to put it up. I forgot to set it up. I was going to work on it this morning so it goes up automatically tomorrow. But I forgot to do that. I got involved with playing with salvages instead. So I hope everyone had a great time today. Thank you all for hanging out with me. My internet is starting to get the wheel of doom, so I'm wondering if it's YouTube. I hope you all enjoyed chatting while we worked on some of our stars. I said make a couple of them, give it a shot and see what it looks like. Find some of your fun and funky fabrics and test those out. Add them to a, yeah, it's the wheel of doom. <laughs> Add them to, thanks Roy, add them to gift cards. Like if you're only going to give a gift card for Christmas, add a little ornament to it so that they have a little handmade gift and then you can do that. Because my kids are getting gift cards for Christmas and I'll probably buy them something small or I don't know, I'll figure out something. But if I buy them a gift card, they can just go out and buy whatever they want when they want and they don't have to tell me exactly. Yeah, I've never been a leader ender gal, but now with the Franken totes, I think I'm going to start cutting up a bunch of two and a half inch squares and I will sew them together in panels and you know in like in four patches or whatever so they can go into the next Franken tote because there's a lot of just sewing a couple pieces here and there like you would on a quilt. So that's what I think I'm going to do. Yes, I hope everyone who's having a hard time heals. I, Sue Smith, if you're sitting at the ER, I hope everything is going good for you. For all of you, Kathy, why do I always, I'm, I'm, I double think myself all the time. Debbie, Devi, I want to say Devi, because it's like divine. So everyone who has going through their things, Sue, everyone that's doing their thing, I hope you're all feeling good, that you get through today, hang out with a few friends, do a little bit of craftiness, because if you can't craft, you may as well watch someone else do it. Thanks for hanging out with me. I'll see you guys next week. I have no idea what I'm doing for next week's tutorial, but I don't have to worry about that until Monday. Bye, guys.